For 30 days straight, I scoured the entire internet for the best One Piece fun facts and secrets I could find. I went through each Q&A Oda did, scrolled through countless Reddit posts, and even included some I noticed myself. There are a total of 91 secrets I found, and I guarantee you didn't know some of these. For example, you all know how Big Mom's goal was to have as many children as possible and also have at least one of every race. In order to achieve this, she obviously needed many different husbands. But did you ever wonder, how exactly does she find them? I mean, she isn't really the prettiest pirate on the seas. Well, as you would guess, Big Mom doesn't play nice. And as soon as she sees someone whom she wants to have a child with, she just kidnaps them. Oh, also after giving birth, she immediately kicks the husband out, forbidding him from ever seeing his children. But out of all of Big Mom's children, I never want to find myself near this one. Daifuku's devil fruit allows him to rub his stomach to summon a genie fighter. However, if he does it too many times, instead of a genie, a giant fart will come out instead. Huh. I guess it's one of the drawbacks of being the Minister of Beans. I'm guessing most of you already know that all of the admirals are named after a color and an animal. For example, Akainu means red dog, Kizaru means yellow monkey, and so on. But have you ever stopped to think, who actually gave them these nicknames? Well, for some reason, the Marines have a whole division dedicated to assigning epithets to their fighters. The head of this division is Nazu Kedagari, whose name literally translates to wants to name. And we can't talk about fun facts without mentioning the legendary nicknames Luffy gives to characters. Some of those are Pigeon Guy, Cabbage, and Pineapple. But did you ever notice that even though he gives a nickname to every person he meets, he never gave any nicknames to his crewmates? The reason for this is very simple. You see, Luffy only gives nicknames to people because he doesn't care about them enough to learn their real names. But when they become a part of the crew, he will make sure to remember and use their real names. So you know how Nami's dream is to draw a map of the entire world, but how exactly does she plan to do this? Does she plan to remember all of the places she's been to and then draw it from memory? <laughs> well, of course not, that would be impossible. Although we rarely see her draw on the show, Oda actually revealed that every day after dinner, Nami draws a map of the area they sailed through that day without ever missing a day. Chopper mentioned a few times how he is not attracted to humans since he wasn't originally a human, but a reindeer. Due to this, many thought he would never find true love as there were no other reindeer like him. But then we were introduced to Milky on Zoo, a reindeer mink. Chopper quickly fell in love with her and she became the only person in the world he wanted to date. After defeating Doflamingo on Dressrosa, many Straw Hat member bounties were raised by 50 million berries, even though some of them didn't even participate in the fight. The reason behind this is that the Marines can't exactly tell who fought who and translate it to numbers well. So they just add a flat amount to everyone's bounty. This happened again when most of the Straw Hat's bounties jumped by 300 million berries following the raid on Onigashima. Most of you probably noticed how the sea restaurant variety got much bigger over time. We can clearly see how bigger it is in chapter 902. However, the thing most of you didn't know about is that two more Barati restaurants have been opened since Sanji left. The first one is run by Patty and is an underwater restaurant, while the second one is run by Karns and looks a lot like the original Barati, except it has a giant Sanji head in the front. <laughs> Looks like Sanji's popularity as a pirate really boosted the business. I don't know about you guys, but I always wondered, what are these crackling things at the tips of sweet Commander Cracker's hair? Well, in one of the SBS, Oda was asked this exact question, and his answer is ridiculous. As it turns out, when creating the character, Oda had absolutely no idea what these crackling things were himself, but he kept them because he thought they looked cool. The first time Sanji's bounty was issued, his bounty photo was actually a drawing instead of a photo. Did did you ever wonder why that is? Well, this happened because a certain someone forgot to remove the cap from the camera when taking Sanji's photo. That someone is Attach, who was the head of the Marines photography department, but was fired after forgetting to remove the cap from his camera on 56 other occasions. But I guarantee almost none of you noticed this little change Oda made. You see, at the beginning of the show, we saw Shanks and his crew drink alcohol from beer mugs, same as many other pirates throughout early One Piece. However, sometime later, everyone started drinking drinking from these barrel looking mugs instead. Oda revealed that he actually made this change because he didn't want to imply that it was alcohol everyone was drinking, since not all the characters are of drinking age, which is 20 in Japan. But we can also agree that barrel mugs look much 
much cooler than the regular ones. So, you all remember Nukama Land, an in-between floor in Impel Down where Ivankov led the prisoners. But did you ever wonder, how was this space created? And why don't the prison guards know about it? Well, you see, before he joined the Revolutionary Army, Morlay, the commander of the West Division, was a nasty pirate. At some point, due to his actions, he was imprisoned in Impel Down, but escaped using his devil fruit that allows him to freely manipulate the ground. Many, many years later, Ivankov found this empty space by accident and turned it into Nukama Land. Oh, also, despite both Morlay and Ivankov being high-ranking officials of the Revolutionary Army, Ivankov still doesn't know that Morlay is the one who dug up that space. All the way back in Chapter 1, when Bandit Huguma kicked down the bar's door, something weird happened. See, just a few pages later, that same door was magically fixed. How the heck did that happen? Well, while answering fans' questions, Oda revealed that it was fixed by a character called Minatomo. He's this short, grumpy looking guy who just can't resist fixing broken stuff when he sees them. <laughs> Jokes aside, it's obvious that Oda just forgot to draw a broken door, so he came up with this ridiculous explanation for it. Throughout the show, we saw a few times that inanimate objects can also eat devil fruits. Some examples are Spandam Sword, which ate elephant elephant fruit, and Mr. Four's Bazooka, which ate dachshund fruit. Although we don't know how these objects even ate devil fruits, there's another example of this that most of you probably missed. In Sukiyaki's house in Wano, if you look closely, you can see a teapot that looks alive. This guy's name is Bambuku, and it ate the Inu Inu no Mi model Tanuki, turning it into a live Tanuki. However, since it's now alive and can feel stuff, it can't be used to heat up tea anymore because hot tea will burn it. The transponder snails are weird creatures with a weird ability. They pretty much work like phones, but can also mimic the appearance of anyone who is speaking through them. However, the most interesting thing about them is that unlike phones, they are living beings and have emotions. So if a transponder snail is sleepy or hungry, it might not want to use its mimicking abilities. Let's now cover a fact that only manga readers know. If you ever read One Piece, you probably noticed these cover panels at the beginning of each chapter. Well, when you combine these panels throughout multiple chapters, you'll actually get a whole mini story. However, the most interesting thing is that the characters appearing in these mini stories usually make an appearance in the main story later on. For example, in this cover story, after the citizens of Lulusia threw Ace into the river, he was saved by Moda, a girl selling milk. Several hundred chapters later, when Peachbeard attacked Lulusia, it was none other than Moda who defeated him. Did you ever want to know the backstory of this frog that was chilling on Usopp's head while he worked as a toad oil salesman? Eh, probably not. But here it is anyway. His name is Gama Pionosuke, and one day while he was chilling, he saw a snake. He got scared and jumped on the first person he saw to get away from danger, which happened to be Usopp. And it's good he landed on Usopp because the moment Usopp saw the snake, he ran away at full speed. Pionosuke then decided to stay on Usopp's head to avoid any more dangerous situations. Many people compared Doflamingo to Spider-Man, mainly because of their web-slinging abilities, but also because Doflamingo's glasses resemble Spider-Man's eyes a lot. However, when Oda was asked about this, he said that Spider-Man wasn't that popular in Japan until recently, and he actually took inspiration from a completely different character. That character is Kamen Rider Super 1, and you can clearly see a resemblance when it comes to their eyes. You probably noticed how everyone who has eaten the devil fruit said that it tastes <coughs> awful. However, when Momonosuke ate it, he wasn't really bothered bothered by it, and the people of Ibisu even called it delicious. This is because they've all eaten the Smile Devil Fruits, which Caesar managed to modify in order to get rid of the bad taste real devil fruits have. They now taste just like normal fruit. Due to One Piece having thousands and thousands of characters, Oda often takes inspiration when designing them. Some of those inspirations include admirals, who are all based on famous Japanese actors, but there are also some lesser known ones. For example, Shinobu, a retainer of the Kozuki family, was actually created to look like the famous Japanese comedian Naomi Watanabe. Although Kawamatsu looks like a kappa, mainly because of his green-colored skin and beak-looking mouth, he is in fact not, because kappa don't exist in the world of One Piece. But if he isn't a kappa, what is he? Well, Kawamatsu is actually a tiger puffer fish man. The reason he acts like a kappa is because his mother told him to do so, so he wouldn't be discriminated against by humans for being a fish man. Throughout the show, we saw a few characters who had abnormally large heads. Naturally, when seeing a bunch of big heads, you will ask the question, whose head is the biggest? Well, firstly, since Vegapunk shortened his head, he is disqualified, but otherwise, he would be the victor. Not counting him, 
The character with the biggest head in the entire One Piece is Vice Admiral Strawberry, whose head grows even more every time he gets sad. Big heads are cool, but you know what's even cooler? Big noses. So who do you think has the biggest nose in the entire One Piece? Maybe Usopp? Well, you'll be surprised to hear that while Usopp's nose is 13 centimeters long, it's only the fourth longest nose in the show. Both Katarina Devon and Arlong have longer noses than Usopp, while the person with the absolute longest nose is the Titanic Captain Vasco Shot. Seems like Usopp has a lot more lying to do if he plans on becoming the number one. But Oda hid a little secret in chapter 977 that I'm honestly surprised anyone has managed to find. It literally took me 10 minutes to find it, and I was purposefully looking for it. This chapter starts off with Nami and a few other Straw Hats hugging Jinbei. And on the next page, hidden in the corner, you can see little Sanji biting a handkerchief out of sadness and jealousy. Another tiny yet significant detail was hidden near the end of Sanji's battle against Queen. If you ever paid attention, you probably noticed that the eyebrows of Sanji's siblings look like 66, while Sanji's were always inverted since he didn't awaken the powers they did. However, when he finally awakened his abilities, his eyebrows reversed to look like 66 as well. After the battle had been concluded, Sanji's eyebrows had gone back to normal, meaning he can switch his Jerma abilities on and off. He confirmed this in his fight against S-Shark, when his eyebrows reversed again, and suddenly S-Shark couldn't touch him. Although you probably noticed that King, Queen, and Jack of the Beast Pirates are named after playing cards, I bet you didn't know this. You see, although it's less obvious, the Flying Six are also named after card games. Sasaki, Black Maria, and Alti are all games you can play with cards. But that's not all, because every headliner is also named after card games like Hold'em, Solitaire, and Poker. But that's still not all, because some of the numbers are also named after card games. Wow, this is pretty interesting. Let's now reveal something all of you wanted to know at one point. Which Devil Fruits would the Straw Hats, who don't already have one, pick if they had a chance? Well, according to Oda, Zoro would choose Kaido's Uo Uo no Mi model Seru, but he wouldn't actually eat it. He would give it to one of his swords. Nami would pick Anel's Goro Goro no Mi because it goes well with her fighting style and abilities. Usopp would eat the Poke Poke no Mi because infinite pockets means he can prepare an infinite amount of tricks. Sanji would take Senor Pink's Sui Sui no Mi because, well, because I don't know why, honestly. And lastly, Frankie would obviously take Baby Five's Buki Buki Nomi because the only thing he wants is more weapons. Okay, you all know how anime characters always have the same hair throughout the show without it ever growing. Well, One Piece is different because everyone on the crew grows hair. It's just that three crewmates give everyone frequent haircuts. So to us, it doesn't look like anything changes. The three haircutters of the crew are Usopp, Sanji, and Robin. In chapter 963, the mountain god Yama is shown to be alive. Even though a few chapters back, Odin sliced it in half. The explanation for this is quite simple, but also quite weird. You see, when Odin cut the mountain god, his cut was so clean. Yama's body could easily be put back together. No one else was yet seen doing something like this, which just goes to show how insanely strong Odin was. We already said how Odin loves to take inspiration from other media when designing his characters. However, sometimes he also takes inspiration when drawing specific panels. For example, when he visited Kyoto, Oda went to the Keninji Temple, where he saw the picture of two dragons. He instantly thought he had to draw this, and he later did, when Momonosuke confronted Kaido on the rooftop. But did you ever wonder how Captain Kid became a pirate? You see, he, Killer, Wire, and Heat were all leaders of rivaling gangs in the South Blue. Although they were rivals, they were also friends, and they respected each other. One day, the island's strongest gang killed Kid's childhood friend Victoria, which made him so mad he teamed up with his rivals and together they defeated the gang, avenging Victoria. After that, Kid decided he didn't want to stay on some small island for the rest of his life, so he became a pirate together with his friends. So, do you remember how I said that all admirals were named after a color and an animal? Well, as it turns out, there's actually another character besides them whose name also follows this rule. This character is Kuroma, the director of the Marine's Criminal Investigative Service, whose name literally translates to Black Horse. But that's not the only thing connecting him to the admirals. As same as the rest of them, he is also modeled after the real-life actor Akira Kobayashi. Does this mean that Kuroma will become the next admiral in the future? Who knows? However, one thing we do know is that every marine has a certain type of justice they follow. It's kind of like a rule that determines what's good and what's not. For example, so far in the show we've seen absolute justice, uncertain justice, and even lazy justice. Many were curious about which justice do the two new admirals follow, and Oda gave us the answer. 
Admiral Greenbull supports so-called determined justice, which is really similar to absolute justice, while Fujitora follows humane justice, which means that he puts protecting the innocent above chasing criminals. Recently on Egghead, we were finally introduced to Dr. Vegapunk and his six satellites. While examining one of them, Pythagoras, one fan noticed something interesting. Pythagoras' design really reminded him of one of the characters from the show they used to watch called Gambare Robocon. And if we compare the two, we can see that they look almost identical. Oda actually responded to this, confirming that he took inspiration from Robocon as he really liked watching the show over 40 years ago when he was a kid. But there is even more stuff in Oda's childhood that inspired him. For example, when CP9 members arrive at their hometown, where all future CP members are trained, we can see this tower, which looks exactly like this Chinese temple in Wenzhou. Oda said he wanted the CP9 training ground to be Chinese oriented because he grew up with a lot of Kung Fu movies. However, as you can already guess, the references don't stop there, as Luffy's signature Gear 4th position is also inspired by something in the real world. This specific pose resembles a Neo statue that can be found guarding Buddhist temples. These statues symbolize power, and if I had one word to describe Gear 4, it would definitely be powerful. During Big Mom's backstory, we saw two young giants, Hyrodin and his friend. Now, we all know who Hyrodin grew up to be, but what if I tell you that we also saw this friend of his much earlier in the show? You see, this giant is none other than Stanson, the giant who was imprisoned at the auction house on Sambauri. During that time, he said that if he ever met the Straw Hats again, he would pay them back. And that's exactly what he's doing, because he's a member of the new giant pirates who are a part of the Straw Hat Grand Fleet. Okay, these connections maybe weren't that hard to make, but what about Big Mom's childhood friend, Gerd? Do you know who she grew up to be? Well, she became a doctor of the new giant pirates, and you can clearly see her in this scene. We can also see her again in Vegapunk's backstory with the other giants, collecting all the books that were left on Ohara. While being imprisoned and impelled down, Doflamingo asked Suru if he could get newspapers to read because he was bored, and she obviously declined since she had absolutely no reason to listen to him. So what was Doflamingo doing the next Next time we saw him, reading a newspaper. Many people thought that Suru eventually felt sorry and gave it to him, but that's not what happened. The reason he got them is because he knows many people in prison due to being one of the most influential criminals, so it shouldn't be surprising that he gets his hands on the newspaper from time to time. But did you ever stop to question, how does Zunesha stand in the middle of the ocean? I mean, it's enormous, but still, this shouldn't be possible. Well, someone asked Oda this exact question, and he replied that Zunesha is not a normal elephant, but a Naitami Norita elephant, a species that has oversized legs with multiple joints. Considering that Zunesha is around 35 kilometers tall, its legs have to be at least 30 kilometers. Although we've seen multiple Sky Islands throughout the show, the Sky Island Balloon Terminal in the New World is unlike any other. The main difference is that this island is not just floating in the air, it's actually being held up by thousands of helium balloons. But how did these balloons even end up there? Well, you see, these balloons actually come from all those unlucky children who accidentally let go of their balloons. In Law's backstory when he attacks Corazon, if you look really closely, you can see Crocodile's face in the newspaper. So what was this article about? Well, during that time, Crocodile was quickly becoming famous for doing a lot of crazy stuff. But after his devastating loss against Whitebeard, he decided to go back to Alabasta and start plotting his plan to take over the country. The specific news article Corazon was reading commented on how heroic and nice Crocodile is for defending the people of Alabasta from pirates. During the Marine Ford War, we've seen just how big Whitebeard's crew was. However, if you paid close attention during this time, you probably noticed that despite these few nurses, there isn't a single female on this crew. This is because Whitebeard believed that women shouldn't be fighters, and that's why he left his entire medical team in a safe place before he went to Marine Ford. Oh, and if you think you remember seeing a woman on the Whitebeard's crew during the Summit War, that was just Izu. It's no secret that there are many emotional scenes in One Piece, but did you know that Oda often gets emotional himself when drawing? He even said that sometimes he would tear up and need to take a short break before coming back to finish the drawing. And if you're wondering which scene made him cry the most, it's this exact scene where Vivi is screaming for her people to stop killing each other, but no one can hear her. 
This next little secret was not even found by fans. It was instead found by one of the fans' parents. You see, same as all other admirals, Fujitora's design is also based on a Japanese actor. However, this one was popular almost 50 years ago, meaning many younger fans would have no way of knowing who he is. This actor is called Shintaru Katsu, and not only does he look the same as Fujitora, but he also played the role of a blind swordsman at one point. So far in the video, we learned that as a kid, Oda liked Japanese movies, kung fu, and comedy shows. So, what else did he like? How about wrestling? On Dress Rosa, we were introduced to two former bounty hunters, Abdullah and Jet. Those names are a clear reference to two retired pro wrestlers, Abdullah the Butcher and Tiger Jet Singh. Oda used to watch these two a lot when he was in elementary school and wanted to draw them in the manga. But did you know that Absalom of Thriller Bark Pirates became a reporter sometime after he was defeated by the Straw Hats? On one of the pages in chapter 700, we can see a Thriller Bark ship sailing while Kid is talking about the mysterious Absa, which is of course Absalom. The job of a reporter was really easy for him due to his invisibility devil fruit, and he often spied on Kid's, Apu's, and Hawkins alliance. His articles became really popular in the New World, but sadly, I doubt any more will come out. After he left the Marines, Kuzan found himself a cute companion. And no, I'm not talking about Blackbeard, but Camel! Camel is a penguin that accompanies Kuzan wherever he goes. He's five meters tall, and that's because he is a super penguin, a species that is much bigger than normal penguins and is also very good at staying above water. Camel can even keep himself from sinking without moving at all. Those of you who have been following One Piece for some time probably heard about a short story Oda created a while back called Monsters. It's a story about a samurai called Ryuma and how he slayed a dragon. It's no secret that Ryuma served as an inspiration for creating Zoro. But did you know that Ryuma also inspired another scene in the manga? Remember a scene from Punk Hazard when Zoro cut the dragon's head? Now look at this panel of Ryuma killing a dragon. They're pretty much the same! It's a very nice reference to Oda's work from almost three decades ago. But can you guess what real life person was Oda's inspiration for Sanji? When asked this question, most people answer Leonardo DiCaprio. And although this is a pretty good guess, it's not correct. Correct. Sanji is actually based on Steve Buscemi from the movie Reservoir Dogs. Before publicly revealing this, Oda said that only one person he knew correctly guessed it. Okay, we covered a lot of small details, but this one may just be the teeniest detail we ever covered. In chapter 653, Zoro and Sanji are fighting as usual, and Sanji tells him that he shouldn't be messed with because he can put anything he wants into Zoro's food. However, Zoro is not afraid of this and tells him that he can even eat poison and razor blades if needed. Most of you probably just forgot this conversation soon after, but Sanji didn't. You see, just two chapters later, Sanji prepared lunchboxes for everyone, and if you look closely, you can see that Zoro is really struggling. This is because Sanji actually put razor blades in his lunchbox, which you can also tell by the hard crunch crunch sound effect. So y'all know how the majority of the things Usopp makes up end up being true? Well, Luffy once did something similar. All the way back in East Blue in chapter 69, <laughs> nice, Sanji and Yosaku talk about fishmen and mermaids, while Luffy draws a few pictures trying to guess what they looked like. He eventually ended up with this weird drawing, which just looked like a fish with arms and legs. However, 557 chapters later, on this exact page, far in the crowd, we can see this exact creature. In 2010, Oda released a data book called One Piece Green, where he shared a lot of early sketches of characters that he wanted to introduce to the story at some point. The thing that caught everyone's attention was that the Blackbeard Pirates were supposed to have a beautiful swordswoman from Wano on their team. However, this character was eventually scraped off to make space for Katarina Devon, which is, well, a significant downgrade. When asked about this, Oda stated that he changed the Blackbeard Pirates design many, many times because he wanted to make sure they all looked perfect. And he just didn't see a pretty character fitting into a crew full of ugly and dirty pirates. One of the saddest places in the entire show has to be the Great Terminal. This junkyard is a lawless area where most people die due to sickness and air pollution. Well, believe it or not, this place is actually based on a real location called Smoky Mountain, located in the Philippines, right next to its capital Manila. Same as how the Great Terminal is right next to the rich Goa Kingdom. One fan was really curious about how Inazuma came out of Ivankov's hair in this one scene. So he asked Oda if people could pay Ivankov to live in her hair, like a hotel. And and they can, but it'll cost them. If you want to stay for one night, it'll cost 5,000 berries, 
but if Ivankov is traveling over the ocean, you'll need to pay extra for the ocean view. If you have a bit more money on you, you could even rent out the big comfortable room in Ivankov's crown too. Although Boa Hancock was first introduced in chapter 516, what if I tell you that we saw her way before that? You see, after the Loketown arc, Oda was asked to draw a few characters Straw Hats will encounter when they enter the Grand Line. And if you take a closer look, you'll notice that one of these characters is Boa Hancock, although her design ended up being a bit different when she was officially introduced. Remember Club Outerman? It's the spirit of a ship that can manifest when the ship is loved and cared for. Usopp saw it on the Sky Island when the spirit appeared to repair Going Merry, if it wasn't obvious from its name. The story about these spirits originates from Germany and German sailors, who believed that the spirit was the ship's guardian and would ensure they traveled safely. Everyone knows that devil fruit users and water don't go well together. So have you ever wondered, how do devil fruit users take a shower? You see, devil fruit users are hated by the sea. So if they get submerged in a big body of still water, they'll grow weak. But any moving water like raindrops will not affect them. So as far as showers go, as long as they stand up and don't let too much of their body be submerged in the water, they'll be fine. The only exception to this rule is Crocodile whose abilities will be fully nullified even while showering due to him being made out of sand. But you'd be surprised to find out just how much research Oda does before naming stuff in the One Piece world. Take Sea Trains from Water 7 as an example. The Puffing Tom is named after the Puffing Billy, which is the oldest locomotive train in the world that's been transporting people for over 200 years. The Rocket Man was named after Stevenson's Rocket, which was built to prove that locomotives were better than stationary steam engines. Also, the man who built the first steam engine was called Thomas, so that could be where Oda got the inspiration for the famous shipwright Tom. Okay, y'all know that when Luffy gets near the fridge, the whole crew may starve. This already happened a few times throughout the show. Well, that's why Sunny's fridge now has a special password Luffy doesn't know. The password for the lock is genius. It's 7326, because 7 and 3 stand for Nami, 3 and 2 stand for San G, and 2 and 6 stand for Ni Bro, and only these three know the password. But did you know that the Straw Hats were originally supposed to be really different? For example, Robin was supposed to be this botanist guy on the left, and Chopper was supposed to be this weird reindeer swordsman. That's not all because Oda initially planned on making Nami with robotic limbs and a huge ax, while Sanji was supposed to be a cowboy wielding dual pistols. So a lot of One Piece fans love to believe that Oda has every single detail planned out beforehand and that he knows exactly how the story will develop. But is this really true? Well, it looks like he has most of the stuff figured out, but he keeps adding non-planned stuff in between. For example, the supernovas were a last minute addition and Oda never planned on introducing them at all. And just look how important they are now. Law has been with the crew since the time skip, Kid helped with taking down Big Mom, and in the current arc, Bonnie is really important. But supernovas aren't the only thing Oda added last minute, and there's another group of characters that he didn't plan on including at all. You see, the story of One Piece was always meant to focus on taking down the emperors, but then Oda added the warlords of the sea and slowed down the story by hundreds of chapters. Three of these warlords even have their own arcs, and many of them are still very important to the plot of the story. I guess even a genius like Oda does doesn't have it all planned out. There's an ongoing joke in the fandom that because One Piece has gone on for so many years, it may outlive Oda himself. Now, although this is very unlikely to happen since Oda isn't that old, one person who is actually scared of not being there to witness the end of One Piece is Luffy's voice actor Mayumi Tanaka, who is 68 years old. But don't worry, because if that happens, her son commented that Masaku Nozawa, the voice of Goku, will take her place. But there's a problem. Goku's voice actor is actually over 20 years older than Luffy's, so I'm not really sure how that's supposed to work. Now, it's common knowledge that the One Piece manga often changes some minor stuff, like small mistakes, for example, before printing the final volumes. However, this one time, they had to change something a lot bigger. You see, after Ace's introduction, we got to see the Jolly Roger of the White Beard Pirates for the first time. Yeah, let's just say that the original symbol on the flag wasn't really appropriate for most of the world. Now, in Japan, this symbol represents benevolence and good fortune, but due to how it's perceived in most of the world, this was quickly changed to the new flag we know today. But what about a fun question next? Do you know who's the only straw hat who has never met any of Luffy's brothers? It can't be the East Blue Crew and Chopper since they met Ace on Alabasta. It also can't be Robin or Frankie since they met Sabo on Dressrosa. And it obviously can't be Jinbei since he's known Ace for a long time. 
that only leaves Brooke, who never had the chance to meet Ace and also missed his chance to meet Sabo since he left Dressrosa early. We all love One Piece figurines and merchandise, but there was one time when a few people brought it to the next level. Around 14 years ago, news broke that real pirates, yes, they exist, hijacked a ship and even put up a pirate flag on it. And their choice for the flag? The Red Hair Pirate Flag. Maybe they're trying to tell us that they are good pirates. In one of the SBS, Oda drew how the Straw Hats would look like when they turned 40 and 60 years old. But what's more interesting is that he included a timeline where something went wrong, where everyone just looked awful. They all look out of shape and broke. Chopper becomes something like a mafia boss, Nami becomes a scam artist, and Sanji actually looks like his father. <laughs> Let's hope the Straw Hats don't end up in this timeline for real. Throughout the story, Zoro earned a few scars that have been with him ever since. Like the one on his chest that he got from fighting Mihawk, or the mysterious scar on his eye he got sometime during the time skip. However, Zoro has another notable scar that almost everyone forgot. It's the scar from when he almost cut his legs during the fight against Mr. Three. These scars on his ankles are still with him to this day, though they're very inconsistent as both manga and anime often forget about them. The recently finished Wano Country arc lasted for about two weeks in real time, from when Luffy came to the island to Kaido's defeat. Now, that's a long time for the Straw Hats to be on one island, so it's understandable that this is the longest arc in the series. But what doesn't make sense is that the second longest arc is Dressrosa. You see, this arc lasted for 102 chapters. However, the events in real time happened in only a few hours. After the battle, the crew stayed on Dressrosa for three days to recover, so they literally slept more than they fought. Even if it's a pretty logical name, the first time Luffy got called Straw Hat Luffy is when Nozomi asked for a bounty to be put up on his head in chapter 94. However, the Straw Hat Pirates weren't named that for a long time. The first person to call them the Straw Hat Pirates is none other than Smoker all the way in Alabasta. From our perspective, the Straw Hats have been together for over 20 years, but in reality, it took them just seven months to reach Sabodi, and after the time skip, it's only been two more months. This means that Luffy has been with Rayleigh longer than he has been with his crew. The same goes for Zoro and Mihawk, and Robin and Dragon. Oh, also, remember that touching reunion between Kobe and Luffy on Water 7? Well, in One Piece world, it hasn't even been three months since they last saw each other. Big Mom gave birth to her first child when she was 18, and she had her last child when she was 60. Based on this, we can calculate that she gave birth to her 85 children in only 42 years. That's two births a year! This means that she was somehow constantly pregnant. This would mean that Big Mom fought as one of the Rock's pirates while pregnant, and that she later became an emperor as a pregnant woman. Pretty interesting. Do you know which Straw Hat has the most screen time after Luffy? It, it has to be Zoro, right? If not, then it absolutely has to be Sanji. Well, it's neither of them, and it's actually Nami. This is a really surprising fact, considering she was absent for almost the entirety of Dressrosa. In Orange Town, after Luffy and the others defeated Buggy, he was left there limbless and couldn't immediately go back to his crew. In the meantime, his crew members, who thought he had died, decided they needed a new captain. Moji and Kabaji fight to see who is worthy of being a new captain, but Richie the Lion accidentally defeats both of them in his sleep, becoming the captain of the Richie Pirates. Sadly, the Richie Pirates didn't last for a single cover page because they were instantly defeated by a nearby tribe. Now, we all know that Dr. Vegapunk is the world's best scientist, and Caesar Clown is the close second. However, the difference between them may be much bigger than you think. During the Dressrosa arc, we learned that only one in 10 smiles grow normally, and then those normal smiles only have a 10% chance to actually work. Using some advanced math, we can deduce that the success rate of smiles is only 1%. This means that even with Kaido's and Doflamingo's backing, Caesar couldn't figure out a way to do it. On the other hand, Vegapunk has managed to replicate multiple existing Paramecia devil fruits, which just goes to show how far ahead of Caesar he is in both technology and knowledge. So, you remember this scene when Vivi met Leo and the other Tentadas during the Levely arc? During the whole conversation, Karu was just standing there, staring at Leo, almost as if he was mad at him or something. So what could it be? Maybe he didn't like Leo as a pirate? Well, as it turns out, the thing that made Karu so mad is that Vivi called Leo cute. Oda likes to make his characters feel more real by telling us what their favorite dish is or what they like to do in their spare time. So he gave every revolutionary officer a favorite food and hobby. Starting with Karasu, his hobby is volunteering and his favorite food is wieners. Lindbergh's hobby is playing board games and his favorite food is hamburgers. 
For Bello Betty, it's gardening and almonds. And for Morle, it's karaoke and bagna cauda, which is some sort of soup made from garlic and fish. But very few people know that Oda actually made a few versions of One Piece before he was satisfied. In one of the versions, the one who inspired Luffy to become a pirate and gave him his iconic straw hat was Garp. In another version, Luffy never meets Nami. Instead, he meets a similar character called Shiruku, and together they beat the Crescent Moon Galley. What's funny is that Galley is a confirmed canon character as he appeared in Barati in chapter 902 waiting to get his food. At one point, Oda was challenged to bring Zoro's three swords, Vado Ichimonji, Son Daikitetsu, and Shishui to life and draw them as people. He outdid himself with these three drawings and drew the three ugliest characters ever. But hey, at least they sort of look like people you would find on Wano. Similarly to what he did with the revolutionary officers, Oda wanted us to know the commanders of the Straw Hat Grand Fleet a bit better. So he told us what food each of them loves and hates. Cavendish likes to uh, eat roses and he would never eat something basic like ramen. Bartolomeo obviously likes sweets and hates vegetables like the child he is. While Don Sai will eat anything Baby Five makes for him. And for all others, you can pause the video right here. Hibari is another sword member we haven't really seen that much, but there's some information about her backstory that almost no one knows. When she was little, Hibari always kept her teddy bear with her as a good luck charm, but one time, when something went wrong on the battlefield, she lost it! When Kobe heard of this, he rushed back to the battlefield and ended up very injured, but he got Tibari her teddy bear back. I'm pretty sure she fell in love with him after that. Although some pirates have obvious hobbies like drinking and adventuring, some of them have more unique ones. For example, Law likes collecting commemorative coins, Kid likes listening to music, Killer likes to play drums and cook, Olapu likes to DJ and surf. Bajay is a boring old guy, so he likes to view paintings and play board games, while Xtrake likes to study astrophysics. Bonnie likes to eat and play Jenga, no surprises there, while Blackbeard loves to gamble and research history. And the most shocking of all, Oodlegay's hobbies are drinking, traveling, and uh, lovemaking. Interesting, but I bet you didn't know about this mysterious rivalry. When Shanks came to Marineford to end the war, his crewmate, Yasep, had an intense staring contest with Whitebeard's 5th Division Commander, Vista. Even though this is a small detail, many people noticed it and quickly went to ask Oda about it. He confirmed that the two have some sort of rivalry, but didn't elaborate further. This next fun fact is really well known, but it's still worth mentioning since it's really interesting. You see, in the story of One Piece, there are literally thousands of pirates, but for some reason, no pirate ever wears an eye patch. This is pretty weird because the first thing you think about when you hear the word eye patch is pirates. However, for Oda, an eye patch is the ultimate symbol of a pirate, so he won't just easily give it to someone. That's why he said that one very special character will get an eye patch near the end of the story. Considering it's One Piece, <laughs> I hope we get to see this character by the end of the decade. Smoker, Tashigi, and Hina also have their hobbies revealed. Smoker's hobbies are making ceramic art and gambling, very irresponsible for a marine officer. Tashigi likes to read books about swords and create kiri'i, which is something similar to origami. However, Hina has the most interesting ones, as she likes riding horses and going to clubs. Also, did you know that Smoker and Hina are basically confirmed as a couple? We even saw them on a date on one of the cover stories and their left hands are always hidden, almost as if Oda is hiding their rings. Okay, I think that's quite enough facts for today, but I got a question. Do you also like theories? If the answer is yes, click on this video next where we explain the entire One Piece theory iceberg.